Or good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon, Professor Wong. I'm Jack. I'm going to introduce my teammates, Sunny and Winnie. Right, it's our pleasure today to introduce the Octopus Car. Well, you may ask what really to introduce about the Octopus Car. Well, you are very familiar with it, right? Say when you buy something in a parking shop, you use your octopus, and when you go to um, the cafe for dinner, say you will use your octopus, or when you um, when you take the MTR or the minibus, you also use your MTR. Well, MT, uh, you, you also use octopus. Well, octopus car is basically everywhere in our life. But why do I have to introduce octopus? That's because one more question, do you know what's really behind octopus, octopus car and supporting it? And that's our topic, what's behind it? So before answering that question, let's see some bit about the history of octopus car. Well, in 1979, MTR started a magnetic card uh, instead of the traditional coin ticket. And since then, uh, the, the ma magnetic card is, was very popular. And until 1984, KCR joined it. And in 1989, the common source value card is very, very popular. And it was applied in uh, various fields. And then in 1997, um, the Octopus card, uh, Octopus Holdings Limited was uh, was what well, was formed and here come the Octopus card which was very popular then and even more popular now because it is now in Hong Kong is used more than by more than 95 percent of the population in Hong Kong so after the history let's see behind it let's see what the technology is supporting Octopus card. Okay. in the following section we are going to talk about the technology of Octopus Card. The core technology of the Octopus Card is called Ferica, which is um, a contactless smart card system developed by Sony. Well, Ferica provides a total solution um, that fully supports the entire life cycle of the Octopus Card, including application development, card issuance, personalization, and daily operation. But it is the world's first contact with smart card certified by this standard and this is the most reliable criteria to measure the security level of the system. Um, and also the large capacity of the card system enables the multi-application of the cards like, uh, like you can use one single card to pay for the transportation tickets or buying things on the in the retail stores, and also the encryption, the encryption of the Fedica system um, provides high security features to guarantee users' privacy, and also is um, environmentally friendly, meaning that you can use one card for a really long time. And the flexibility in its shape also enables customization and personalization. And then. Um, here comes the first part of the technology, the contactless transaction. Um, well, this, the communication between the reader or the writer and the Octopus card is activated by EM, EM waves radiated from the reader or the writer, as we can see from the, from the picture. And the ANETA and IC chips are incorporated inside the Octopus card, paired with uh, the same data in the reader or the writer. And it communicates on a standard frequency of 13.56 megahertz with a speed of 212 kilobits per second. And this symmetric communication doesn't require any subcarriers. And then the encryption process of Fedica. Well, it uses um, the three DES, which means triple data encryption standard, um, uh, encryption standard for its encryption, and this provides a relatively simple method of increasing the key size of DES to protect against brute force attacks and without requiring a completely new block cipher algorithm. The encryption key is uh, generated dynamic dynamically. 
every time the virtual authentication is, um, is done and therefore preventing frauds such as impersonal evasion. And random numbers are, u are used every time during virtual authentication to ensure the security. Octopus card is meant as the coding for its bank coding. Um, this is kind of coding that is tolerant of noises uh, caused by distance fluctuation between the reader, writer, and the card. The following table gives the manage, uh, Manchester value for the, uh, the convention of IEEE 802.3 convention. Uh, basically, it means that only when um, the original data and the clock takes the same value, um, the Manchester value will be 1, otherwise it will be 0. For modulation, Octop Octopus Card uses uh, amplitude shifting, uh, shift keying. This is kind of a modulation that uh, uses the carrier wave's amplitude to represent data. For example, in this um, graph, we can see that uh, when the bit uh, data is 0, it is represented by um, the zero amplitude of the carrier wave, and when it is one, it is repre uh, represented by some positive uh, amplitude of the carrier wave. Octopus card contains individually managed file and uh, directories to allow it to offer multiple applications at the same time. Um, the file area uh, defines a uh, differentiate um, service providers, and the service uh, files will define uh, what kind of service you are actually having. Um, for example, if I'm buying a <coughs> bottle of uh, water in the 7-Eleven shop, then the area um, directory will be 7-Eleven, and then the service uh, will be uh, buying a bottle of water. Um, another very important characteristic of Octopus Card is that it has a very high uh, transaction speed. From um, the card de detection to mutual authentication and then to data reading and writing, the whole process only takes um, less than 0.1 second. Um, this is achieved uh, by um, the very fast trans transfer speed of 212 kilobytes, uh, kilobits per second. This abs uh, absolutely meets the requirements of this first trip. So to summarize a bit, um, Octopus Card um, achieves contactless um, communication through EM waves. Um, it uses 3DES for encryption and Manchester coding for big coding. And then for modulation, it uses uh, ASK method uh, with the carrier frequency of 30.5 six mm, megahertz, and the transfer speed is 212 kilobits per second um, to make sure that the transaction speed, uh, transaction time is within 0.1 second. All right, now here comes the application. Well, you are all familiar with it, right? As I mentioned before, it's almost everywhere, transportation, retail, leisure. But is that an end? So the future of Octopus Card. Um, before entering the fancy futures, let's talk about a little bit technology support. As we mentioned above, Octopus Card adopts uh, the multi-application technology, which ensures the fancy futures. And also, an RFID tag has a storage of about four megabits, uh, which is about uh, megabytes, which is about. 80,000 words, well, that's a lot of information can be stored. So in the future, what you have is, well, you have to uh, give up the large wallet you have because with only one Octopus card, you don't need your credit card anymore. You don't need your student ID card. You don't need your ID card. And you don't need your membership card either. So Octopus card in the future will become an all-in-one uh, 
smart card, uh, which may be your boarding, boarding pass, your transit tickets, your loyalty, loyalty points, etc., etc. So that's the bright future of Oculus Card. Right, after our introduction, hopefully you will have a basic understanding of what really Oculus Card is. Now comes the Q&A session.